From the 20th anniversary of Monday Night Raw that happened on the January 14th, 2013, and the commentators were JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry the Kid Lawler. 25th, 20th anniversary, I had everything expecting. I was expecting the names to come back, like The Undertakers, um, The Rock, which we did get The Rock, Mick Foley, we did get him too, Ric Flair, that's good, but we didn't get Undertaker, we didn't get, we didn't get Brock Lesnar, we didn't get um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, we didn't get Shawn Michaels, we didn't get Bret the Hitman Holt, we didn't get, um, let me think of more names. I can think of them. Oh, you know what else we didn't get? We didn't get Ken Shamrock. I'm just going off edge. Um, let me think. Let me think of more. Triple H. Um, we didn't get Stephanie McMahon. We got Vince McMahon, but we could have gotten Shane McMahon. We didn't get anybody. We barely got anybody. We didn't barely got anybody. We didn't get the big boss, man. I, I, he's dead, but I'm just pointing out names. Jimmy Superfly, Superfly, Jimmy Snucker, Rowdy Roddy Piper, um, Lita, Trish Stratus, um, maybe Beth Phoenix would be good, uh, no, we didn't get any of that, we just got a typical Raw show, that's all we got, a typical show that was just based on Monday Night Raw, um, and if I, I, I was fine because it was regular, I would have been fine if it was just a regular show, but it's the 20th anniversary. Bring some stars back. Chris Jericho, even. I know he's on tour, but they probably could have let him out for a little bit. We barely got any of these stars. All we got was the same stars today, and that's a good thing, but we where were the stars? Where were the names? Where was Christian, and even? Edge and Christian. They could have done the famous pose. Um... They, they could have done the famous line. If, for those of you with prize photography, but no, we got nothing. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, and then it's, I actually did like that they did this. They showed all the Raw theme songs, the Titan songs, they had all the theme songs, and I did like that. It showed pretty much everybody. Austin's, um, the New Age, actually, speaking with the New Age Outlaws, D-Generation X. Um, that showed everybody, pretty much. Then Vince McMahon comes out, he talks about Raw, talks about how it's the greatest deal ever, how it's been around, like, forever. Then the big show comes out, he wants to talk about what happened on SmackDown, when Alberto Del Rio defeated him for the World Heavyweight Championship. So, um, and Big Show wants, and Big Show, he mentions how Big Show lost weight, and he says, thank you, I have been lowering down the cards, but he was talking about how he doesn't have the championship gold anymore. Then Del Rio comes out, and, um, Says that we should do the rematch right here tonight. Uh, Big Show says he wants to do it at the Royal Rumble. Then Del Rio then has Ricardo throw confetti on him. Um, Big Show and Del Rio brawl with Del Rio getting the better of it. That was pretty much it. Um, then we get... Um, it shows like the greatest raw moments. And Bob Barker this was one of them. And it happened on September 7th, 2009. And I have a feeling, I don't really think that was one of the greatest moments. It showed, I just don't. Um, and then, um, we get Wade Barrett versus Randy Orton. And during this, it shows a TNA ad, which was kind of strange. It's WWE. Um, this match was a, not a bad match. Um, I actually, wait, what ends up happening is Orton goes into the post. And Barrett hits the bow hand on him and wins. And that was pretty cool. I actually wasn't expecting Randy Orton to win that I mean, way favorite to win that match. So then um, we get Eve Torres backstage, and she's um, Booker T tells her that um, she's gonna um, that if she gets counted out or disqualified in a title match with Caitlyn, um, she loses the championship. And um, then uh, Teddy and and then Eve tries to float away into to t Booker's way to into not making it happen, but Booker just laughs at it and. And Teddy laughs too, and then Eve slaps Teddy. Was then we get the four month evaluation. This was kind of funny. Um, Brian and Kane are just gonna straight up lie about what they're gonna say to Doctor Shelby. So then Doctor Shelby comes in. Um, he asks Kane about three facts he learned about him, and one of the facts was that um, Kane likes to dance. And then one of the fact, and then he, he Kane tells the dude. And then he wants Kane to do the same thing to Daniel Bryan. So he t so he tells um, Shelby that um, 
Daniel Bryan wears girls' attire. That was hilarious. Then uh, they do some trust exercises. So then Team World Scholars come in. They insult Shelby, saying he's like a bad doctor. Then um, Shelby gets sick and tired because he's like, they would have had been better off having Doctor Phil be their therapist. Then that just sets him off, and then they have Kane and Brian attack him. So then they vote, and then Shelby, Brian, and Kane all chant yes. That, that was pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. So then we get Kane with Daniel Bryan versus Damian Sandow and Co with Cody Rhodes. It was a match. Kane just choke slammed Damian Sandow for the win. Um, then we get the Saturday morning slam ad. Um, it's now 10:30. That's all I can say about it. It doesn't make me want to watch it, though. Um, then we get a WWEshop.com ad. It's pretty much the same thing that they've been doing with um, the Sheamus thing. Um, it shows the Alberto Del Rio and Big Show's promo again. They get the first Hall of Fame inductee, and it's Mick Foley. Um, that was pretty cool. He deserves to go into the Hall of Fame after everything he's done. Hell in a Cell with Taker. Triple H, all the Hell in a Cell matches he's done. All the hardcore moments he's done with Edge, Randy Orton. Um, even like the, ta the he's all the WWE Championship three times. They say, and when um, WCW spoiled Mankind defeating The Rock for the championship, um, everybody turned, tuned in, and that was a big mistake. Then um, he had the, he had that empty arena match with The Rock, the I quit moment with The Rock when The Rock um, videotaped him saying I quit. Um, him beating the New Age Outlaws for the, um, Tag Team Championships with Chainsaw Charlie, known as Terry Funk these days. Um, Mick Fult, he even his promos with Punk. Um, it's actually a few with Triple H when Triple H beat him in the street fight. Um, maybe like, uh, let me think. Oh, the Evolution match when it was Evolution, which consists of Batista with Flair and Randy Orton. Versus the Lock and Saw connection when he even when he formed the Lock and Saw connection, and the feud with Taker he had, um, the Hell in a Cell match he had with Kane. Uh, let me think. Do even the gimmicks that he's had. Do love Cactus Jack, him, mankind, and, uh, and also himself. Um, that ECW one night stand match he had with when he teamed up with Edge to take on Terry Funk and Tommy Dreamer. Those are just legendary moments. That though, that is just good stuff right there. Um, so he definitely deserves to go into the Hall of Fame. Then um, he's about to make a speech, and I don't think, and I didn't think he was going to make a speech until the Hall of Fame. And um, so then, so then the Shield comes out. Um, they try to attack him. Then uh, Ryback comes out and tries to fight him off, and he gets outnumbered. Randy Orton comes out fight and tries to fight him off. So then you get outnumbered. Sheamus comes out. They all fight him off. Ryback hits shell shocked on um, Dean Ambrose. And then um, he gets interviewed, and Ryback says that every time he's faced CM Punk for the WWE Championship, the Shield have kept him away. Now he's gonna make sure that the that he extinguishes pain on each and every one of them. Then it shows the most outrageous gimmicks in Raw history. I'm surprised they did this. They did the goo, the hockey player, Gold Dust. Um, William Wingo was like a bull wacko or something. Uh, let me think. Undertaker was probably one of them. Batista. I don't remember this off the top of my head. Uh, let me think. Visua. Those are like ones I can name off the top of my head. I don't know all of them. Um, Slick. I don't even know why I said Slick. But yeah, those are like all the names I can mention off the top of my head. They did show it. I did like how they showed that. Um, the Boogeyman actually was up there. Simon Deed should... Well, he, he's never here. Yeah. Alright, then we get SmackDown ad. It shows Randy Orton. I guess they don't know what they're doing for SmackDown. They're trying not to spoil it. Then we get Eve Torres defending the Divas Championship against... Caitlyn, and, and as usual, if she gets disqualified, um, she loses the title. This match wasn't bad, I'm not going to lie. But it's just like, it's hard to get into it because the last three matches I've seen with Divas, is gonna, it has to be them. So that's why it's hard to care about it. Um, Eve hits a finisher, the moots, well, like that moots when it's kind of like that reverse crossroads, but Caitlyn ends up kicking out. 
So she tries to get herself counted out. Um, well, actually, I think Caitlyn does the knees to the gut. She ends up rolling out of the win. Um, and then Caitlyn, so then Eve tosses her into the barricade. Ka Caitlyn goes in on one side of the win. Eve goes in, uh, no, Ka Eve goes in on one side of the win. Caitlyn goes in the other side. Um, so then, and Eve thinks she's outside the win. Caitlyn spears her for the victory and wins the Divas title. And I think that's fine since they've been building her up to win it. Even though she's had so many shots and they don't have any other Divas to put on it. What the fuck? Then we get um, a Brodus Clay interview. Um, he, it shows when CM Punk says said that comment about Brodus Clay, how he like dances and such as your fil filthy little hands. Um, Brodus Clay says he doesn't do it because he has to. He does it because he wants to. I honestly doubt that. I have a feeling he's forced to do this gimmick, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Then eventually it shows the Donald Trump segment on um, March 12, 2007. It shows Donald Trump um, punching Vince McMahon and the contract signing that we're having for WrestleMania 23. I didn't watch it then, so I didn't. I don't really know what to say about that. Um, so then we get Brodus Clay versus CM Punk with Paul Heyman. They have a match. Punk wins by the um, Intercontinental Vice. Then we get the best particular moments in Raw history. This was cool. This was like everything I think bad that happened. Like. Moments like I think it had, like what calls I think like um Vince McMahon being exploded by the DX Stone Cold Steve Austin with his Zamboni um Stone Cold Steve Austin put cement on Vince McMahon's um Corvette um Kane being driven into the um like that little stageway and um with Sh by Shane. Let me think of more. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin um, smashing the locks car, um, which I which is on the Stone Cold DVD, which I didn't get to review. Uh, let me think of something else. They actually should have showed Stone Cold going into Billy Gunn's house. I don't know why they no not Billy Gunn. Um, what's his name? Uh, I forget his name. I know his name is top of my head. I I. I Uh, but I, I think you know who I'm talking about. I forget his name off the top of my head. Brian Pillman. Going into Brian Pillman's house. Um, let me think about... Oh, um, St Vince McMahon's limousine getting exploded. Um, let me think of more. Um, I think... It, oh, when Vince McMahon um, trapped DX in a car. I, think, I remember he trapped DX somewhere. They showed a bunch of these... Moments. Oh, I, they, I wonder if they showed the Austin one when... Austin got ran over by the car, and then Austin tipped Triple H over. I doubt they showed that, though. Uh, let me get Mick Foley backstage. He's talking to his son, saying he wasn't scared. He, was gonna, he, was, he really was going to fight them, though. Then the mob comes up and says he, he congratulates him on getting into the Hall of Fame. Um, then they uh, uh being really loud. They're bringing back Rock and Sock Connection stuff. They go, finally, the Rock and Sock Connection are back in the WWE. Then eventually, um, Vicky Guerrero comes up and says that they're being too loud. Um, Mick Foley says, okay. Vicky Gu I thought the walk was going to, like, shoot on Vicky Guerrero, but, um, he says he has nothing to say. Then Mick Foley's like, what the hell, Walk? But Walk says that there's a time and place for everything, so trust me. But Mick Foley's like, you walked far on me last year. And he goes, nobody remembers that. But I do remember that I forgot about it, though, until he mentioned it. Then, um, that was pretty much it. He, they uh, kind of form, the, the formal was done. So they make it Sheamus versus the 3MB in an over-the-top rope challenge. Um, it was a handicap match. Um, Jinder Mahal went to go off the top rope, but Sheamus got moved and he eliminates him. Sheamus eliminates McIntyre. Um, Sheamus went for the roll kick on Heath Slater, um, but uh, he misses it. Then, he's, then he pulls Heath Slater over, but the three, but Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal pull Sheamus down, causing him to get eliminated. Um, and then Sheamus just attacks him after. So he makes him, at least they're trying to make him look strong again. They really made him look weak up these past two weeks. Start making him look strong. They're starting to a little bit, but not much. That win over Sheamus kind of did nothing because Sheamus just attacked him after. Um, so I really don't think that really did anything. 
Then um, John Cena gets interviewed about the cage match and every the past two, the last two times he was in the ring. Um, you he with Biggie Langs has gotten involved, but Cena when says that he's not focusing on why are you focus, focusing on what happened recently in the past. We should be focusing on everything: the Ric Flairs, the Mick Foley's, the Batistas, the Randy Orton's, Triple H, Undertaker. He also mentions this guy named um, Braden Walker, which I have no idea who he is, but I guess he was a wrestler at the time. But no idea who he is. Um, I'll look him up though. And then he says that he's going to make another Raw Roller by defeating Dolph Ziggler in the cage tonight. Um, so then it shows the Shield is attack, or well, attempted to attack, um, look for Mommy Mick Foley. Then we get Miz TV, and he comes out and he says, Guess who's going to be the guest on Miz TV? And he gives him a hint, and I thought it was going to be awesome. It was, Whoa! 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 Yeah, so we haven't seen Austin yet. We haven't seen Austin since. I have no idea how long to do Austin. It's been that long. Um, usually Austin didn't show up at all last year. I think the last time you saw him was 2011. Um, I think it was a WrestleMania. No, because he wasn't tough enough. I want Austin back. I want Stone Cold Steve Austin. Give me a hell yeah. If that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Where is he? I mean, like, this, like, the past two times of a special... Law wasn't, Austin wasn't the, I understand he has an injury, but he could have done something. Because it wasn't on the 1000th episode, now he's on, you barely had anybody on the 20th episode. Um, you have Ric Flair, that's good. I actually did like that they had Ric Flair. They were, it was pretty cool stuff. He actually mentioned that his favorite Raw moment was the night after Shawn Michaels defeated him at WrestleMania. And I was thinking, that's true, yeah, because they, they did a special thing, they all came out and clapped, but then I'm thinking... Why the fuck didn't they do that for Sean? Like, honestly, Sean Michaels. Ric Flair, I understand, he's a legend. But Ric Flair just went to fucking TNA, had a match, and it was a, he just kind of was a hypocrite. He said he was retired. I remember in WWE when he was trying to feud with Randy Orton when he was a member of the Legacy. He wouldn't fight him, and he wouldn't fight um Chris Jericho because he was retired. But then he goes to TNA and he decides to wrestle, yep. Oh, uh, yeah. But then, um... Okay, um, because then, but look at Sean though. I don't think this is. I don't think. I don't think he went to another promotion. But Sean hasn't had one match since he retired in 2010. Yep. And you just give and you don't even give him a celebration. All he got was Sean Undertaker doing, which was good, doing the salute. Then Triple H comes out and um, just gives him a hug. And then, you know, when Triple H actually made a speech, you had to continue an angle with Sheamus. That was actually good. Because that made Sheamus more of a heel. But you couldn't let Triple H say goodbye to Sean, like, before he was about to leave. Because he wasn't going to see Sean that often. That's a little bit of a peeve I have right there. But, yeah, then uh, Ric Flair starts doing woo stuff. Um, I think he mentioned, like, the best catchphrase, too. It was like, um... If you can't, you can't see me, my time is now. Give me a hell yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know it by Zack Ryder. A bunch of guys. And I quote. He, he just goes down the list of catchphrases that happened on Raw. Then uh, Mick Flair says his catchphrase. Limousine, Martin, jet flying. Then Antonio Cesaro comes out. Says he didn't need a catchphrase to get... Doesn't need a catchphrase to get him the head in life. Unlike Americans. And then... um. He's, Miz offers to fight him. Cesaro goes to leave. Flair attacks him with the chops. Miz gives him the skull crushing finale and the figure four leg lock. So that was fine. Then we get um the Royal Rumble ad. This Royal Rumble ad was weird. Um, it showed like guys in a ball, guys and girls, picking who they want to win the Rumble, and Cena just going like this. That does not make me well. If it was, if the Lock and Punk and the Royal Rumble, like if it was, if this wasn't the Royal Rumble, if it was just a pay per view with nothing on it, I would not want to watch the show. How does that make me want to watch the show? You had like the advertisement. They had the like I think they assumed that okay, the Lock's gonna be there. We don't need to put much time in our advertisement. But uh, some people don't know who the Lock is. 
Yeah, because some people don't have computers to go on fucking YouTube to look up who the block is. So some people, they don't know. Like, I, they could say they don't know who the... But they don't know that the block's been a wrestler before. They, they probably think he's just been a movie actor. That's what I'm thinking. The block... That, that's what I'm saying. And some people are little kids. They don't watch the movies that The Rock's been in. Um, I'm just saying. I don't even know actually what I'm saying. <laughs> I was talking about nothing right there. So then we get a Mike Tyson. So then it shows Mike Tyson coming to Raw from January 19th, 1999. You know what's happened when he faces off the Stone Cold. I've already covered this. So then we have Daniel Bryan with Kane versus Cody Rhodes with Damian Sandow. I actually forgot to mention that if the Royal Rumble team, how knows, going to be defending the WWE Tag Team titles against Team World Scholars. No idea who's winning this match. I've been saying for months that Team World Scholars are going to win the Tag Team titles. But I'm not going to... I'm going to... I don't know if they're going to. But what happened is Brian is still selling his knee injury. So Rose works over the knee. Then I think I kind of like took my eyes and then Rose is in the no lock and gets taps out. Yeah. So then we have Eve Torres interview on the app. I don't know why they didn't just do this on TV. Um, and she quits. She quits. Now you have, like, no Divas WWE. Let me think who you have. You have Caitlyn now, the Divas champion. AJ. I think who else you have. I actually don't know. Those are the only two Divas I know, know off the top of my head. You have nothing now. This better be a fucking storyline because Eve... If, if you have another diva gone, you're only going to have two divas. You might as well just get rid of that championship because you have barely any divas. You can't put Fuse with it. The thing with TNA, I know they're not using them as much as they could, but the thing is they actually utilize, they try to utilize their divas. They actually are trying, even though it's a crappy storyline. It's they're, they're fucking trying. Just let them fucking try. Just what the fuck. So then we get a main event ad. With uh, Randy Orton and Antonio Cesaro match. Um, then we get AJ Lee and Big E Langston backstage. They're talking about the weddings they actually had in WWE. They're like the Edge and Lita one. Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. And I actually thought they were gonna. it was going to be the one when Triple H was in the car. And Stephanie, was like, Stephanie McMahon was like talking. Knocked out. So yeah, that's why. I thought it was going to be that one. So Then um, Big E Langston shows the one that AJ Lee and Daniel Bryan had. Which became general manager. And AJ says that was the best moment of my life. And John Cena took that away from me. What? Okay. John Cena wasn't even involved with AJ yet. AJ became general manager. She walked out on Daniel Bryan herself. What was they thinking right here? AJ is the lead. Yep. Good booking right there. Good booking. Actually, I think we did. By the way, we did get Sean on a tweet. On a fucking tweet. We didn't get him in person. Nothing. He says to mention him. Just to mention him. Why could. Oh, actually, and we also got. Oh, yeah, actually, we're gonna. And then, um, the, Z Ziggler says it's gonna be okay and he's gonna, um, beat Cena and it's gonna be the best moment in 20 years. So then we get Dolph Ziggler with Biggie Langston and AJ Lee. I forgot to write that. Versus John Cena with Jim Ross on commentary. Um, this was a pretty good match. Um, they utilized the cage. Ziggler did the jumping DDT. Um, Cena was going to win the match a number of times, and, but Biggie Langston would use it like a chair. And when he slammed the door, he would um, try to pull Ziggler out when he went out the door. Um, then he um, would use his strength to get his foot. Eventually, AJ Lee flips out after so many times of uh, Ziggler not being able to beat Cena. So then AJ Lee climbed the cage. Biggie Langston comes in with the um, case. Um, goes, he gets hit with it by Dolph, and then Cena hits the FU on him for the win. That's fine because Cena need, does need to make himself look a little bit credible since he didn't have a good year, and I think they're trying to do that. So then we get the walk. Oh, then we also it also shows the best pay per view moment of um, 2012, and then we get the Walks concert. He he talks about Heyman and his um. Flat nipples, um, which was funny. How he's a walrus. Then he has Vicky Guerrero come out. He starts to sing a good song about her. Then eventually he sings like, "Bitch, you look damn bad." He, he, and then he, um, 
he does all he he sings that song. Has Punk come out? By the way, Punk did cut a promo about fact how he's been the WWE champion. Um, and he's like been the longest reigning WWE champion, best champion of all time. Then the Rock says that he CM Punk is gonna lose the title in fourteen days. Then it, that Paul Heyman has flat nipples, and that's pretty. Much, I don't remember the third fact. Then Punk just runs down the ring and they brawl around, and I think that was awesome. Um, they didn't need to cut a promo this week because um, they said all they needed to say last week. Just have them fight this week. What I what, what I'm actually happy too because I feared that it was just gonna end with Punk just standing like that, but at least they had some physical contact. They actually do want some physical contact. And, um, they both, I think, look strong in this ball, too. So, yeah, that was pretty much, that's pretty much it, guys. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't, and do all the stuff in the description box. I'm leaving. I'm going out there. See you later. I'm gonna go out my living room, upload this, watch Suicide Dive Wrestling. He's coming out with a Q&A video, send in your questions to him in a video. Um, I'm gonna go watch Wrestling Gurus. Then, eventually, I'm gonna watch... Make edits to my notes on Brett the Hitman Hard and Shawn Michaels DVD. So that's pretty much it, guys. And see you later.